All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome into Studio Day Heffrey on a lovely Monday. Uh, we're going to get into all sorts of stuff, including this tight end draft clash for the Cowboys, defensive tackle, where they can get help. Of course, everybody's asking about Dak and Tom Brady. Don't worry, that one won't take long. Uh, but first, I want to start off with, oh, and the XFL. We got the XFL. But I'm going to start off selfishly on this video. Uh, I'm going to be the co-chair of the NAMI Walks North Texas event at Dr. Pepper Ballpark in Frisco on May 16th. NAMI, if you guys are familiar with a lot of the stuff I've done with them, is the National Alliance on Mental Illness. As somebody who deals with anxiety and depression, they've been really uh, a cool company, or not company, a cool charity, a bunch of good people uh, that I've sort of intersected with and then ended up doing some things with, and I love them. Uh, mental illness, anybody who has a mental health challenge, uh, I think it's really important for those people to know that you're not alone. There's so many people that deal with that every day, including myself, every morning, every night. Um, and so it's really cool. They're doing their walk to raise sort of awareness, the destigmatization of mental illness. Like, if you've got something going on in your life, that's cool. A lot of us do. A whole lot of us do. Uh, and so, you know, killing the stigma and trying to raise money for NAMI, is an awesome deal. So if you go to either my Facebook page or my Twitter page or NAMI North Texas, are they .com or .org? You should know those things, Jeff. But just look up NAMI North Texas and you can find the walk. And I want people to join my team. You can make a team for the walk. And my goal for my team is to raise $2,500. I think I've raised 600 and something dollars. But it's in May. We got time. But I also want to have a bunch of people come out. Our goal is to have 2,020 walkers for 2020. And right now, less than 100 are registered. But it's uh, it's a cause that is very near and dear to me. So if you have the time, on May 16th, I'd love for you to go on the website and register to walk and walk on my team. You can look up my name or Team Jeffrey time and register to walk with us. Or if you get 2 bucks, 5 bucks, 10 bucks, 100 bucks to make a donation to NAMI, that would be incredible as well. Okay, on to the sports. First thing that we're going to talk about today, which one did I put first on the scroll? I don't know. It's a scroll, so you can't really put them in order. But uh, the Dak and Brady thing is weird. That I, Listen, I made a, a, a very in-depth 45-second video yesterday to address the talking about Tom Brady and Dak, and now Michael Irvin had to go on the fan this morning and clarify, I never said that Cowboys were talking about this. He just heard people, someone, someone important, talking about the idea of could you trade Dak and Tom Brady and Dallas and blah, 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 blah. And you can talk about, listen, I'm a team-building guy. I'm down for it. If Dak says, hey, I want $60 million a year, and you're like, man, we're never going to be able to work this out. What else can we do to move forward? That's cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. But as long as we realize that that is not a real conversation, it's fantasy and it's sports radio, and sports radio is fun. I love doing whatever topic. Team-building is fun. Like, would you, oh, would you do this? Would you do that? I'm down for those conversations. As long as we realize, like, let me see. I had some questions about this uh, from you guys on my last video. Like, yeah, Pedro said, hey, what about Michael Irvin's claim that Dak will be traded? He did not claim that, and now he's, cl he's cleaned that up where he's like, no, 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 I never said that. No one from the Cowboys ever said that. That's just what people write when they hear me wrong. Robert Tucker, talk about how delusional Dak is, thinking he's worth more than Russell Wilson. Wilson's a Super Bowl champion. Dak's one and two playoff record, not even close. That's not how this works. That's not how the quarterback market works. That's not how any market works. And you don't use team accomplishments to decide how good a player is either, so don't do that. Uh, is Dak better than Russell Wilson? No. Will there be five guys who aren't as good as Russell Wilson who make more than him in the next three years? Yes, because that's how it works. The cap goes up, so salaries go up. Quarterbacks are the most important player on the field, so if your quarterback is good, he gets paid because if he hit the open market, Dak Prescott – would break Russell Wilson's record. He would get probably 38 to $40 million a year. That's just how it works. If you don't have a quarterback and you're looking for one and there's a good one available, then you pay him all the money. So the Cowboys, they're playing this game, and they've played this game before. They played this game with Tank Lawrence, where it was like, well, you know, you got your injury history, and, you know, we're going to franchise tag you, and, you know, we got to, you know, you got to prove it. 
because we don't want to pay what, what your agent's saying you're worth right now because, you know, that number doesn't really fit into the way we uh, wrote out our budget. So why don't, why don't you take this franchise tag? And Tank did, and then he went and showed you, yeah, I am a really good player. And then they're like, damn it. Now we got to pay him more money than we could have paid him last off season, which sucks. But, you know, we didn't want to pay him last off season because we want to improve it one more time. So Dak, who's going to be asking for sure, he's going to be asking for a ton of money. He's a quarterback. He's a good quarterback. He's asked for a ton of money, right? So they're going to look at it just like they did last year where it's like, oh, the demands of your agent. That's too much. That's too much. We'll, we'll let him play out his rookie deal. We'll let him do that, and we'll address this next offseason. So then Dak goes out and has a good year. You guys are going to say 8-8 eight because eight, there's a lot of Dak haters out there. Dak played well. Um, and so now you get to this offseason, and guess what? His asking price goes up because you didn't sign him before at the number that you didn't like. Now, if the Cowboys could rewind 12 months at the number they didn't like, they would love it today. They'd love to sign that today. Now you can't. So now you're going to tag him. And if you don't get a long-term deal worked out, you're going to wait until next year. And then next year, coming off of that franchise tag, if you tagged him again, the number would be massive for one year. And it would be the last time you could realistically tag him. So he would be staring down the barrel of actual unrestricted free agency, which if he played out one, two more years, then yeah, now Dak will be a $42 million player or whatever. You can pretend that doesn't happen from year to year. But two years ago, Jimmy Garoppolo at $27 million was the market. Now the market's 35. Don't let the Chiefs get a deal done before Dak gets his deal done because then the market in two years will have gone up from 27 to 40 or 40-something, 40 whatever Pat wants. Uh, and then whoever else asked about it and talked about Tom Brady, yeah, Billy McDonald, assuming what Irvin said was true and Dallas trades Dak and signs Brady for now, no, no one has ever, Maybe someone has. I'm sorry if I'm wrong with this. No one's ever gotten worse at quarterback on purpose. And Tom Brady is worse than Dak Prescott. The end. That's the end of the Brady thing. Because if your rationale is, well, yeah, but I could save uh, $4 million a year. I'll make it eight. Make it 10. That is not worth getting worse at quarterback. It's not. Now, if you're saying... I'm 100% sure the Cowboys cannot win it all without Dak Press or with Dak Prescott, so I don't want to pay him because once he gets paid, I know they won't be good enough. If the team believed that, then sure. Tag him and trade him and blow it up. You're going to blow it up. But where this team is, most realistic people aren't going to say that the answer is to blow it up. They're going to say the answer is to go try to win the Super Bowl, and your quarterback's going to be part of that. So kill the Tom Brady stuff. Got it? Great. Uh, let's see. What else did I have on the docket today? That was Dak and Brady. Join my team was about NAMI. I want to have the biggest team in the history of the NAMI walk. So go to the walk page, register to walk, register as a walker, get on my team, and then donate something if you can. Uh, let's go through some of the other questions that people had. A lot of people asked about the XFL. That was actually the most popular question I got was just the word XFL or what you think of the XFL. And I'll tell you what I thought. I think that uh, the Dallas Renegades ruined it for me because I went back and watched the Saturday games, and they were fun. I like it. My favorite thing about the XFL, when they go to review, they take you in the booth where the guy's watching the replay. Uh, it might not be the best look because the first time they did it, I was like, man, this guy seems really unsure of himself. But, hey, if that's real life in the booth, show us real life in the booth. He's sitting there with his Xbox controller, like, oh, is he, oh, is he, did he, mm, is he down? Did he catch it? Is that a catch? Um, but yeah, transparency. Holy cow. That's great. And then they brought on Dean Blandino. And at that point I lost my mind. I don't need more Dean Blandino in my life. Okay. Thank you. But no, I think the XFL's fun. The renegade game sucked because they didn't have their quarterback. So they put in some guy who apparently was an Instagram underwear model six months ago. And he just dink and dunked his way to scoring no points. But it'll be fun. I think the depth of talent will be a problem. Like, watching the Dallas game wasn't a lot of fun because they had they didn't have a quarterback. And quarterbacks are so hard to find that hopefully Landry Jones can play. Cardale Jones was okay. The best quarterback of the weekend was um, P.J. Walker, who I didn't even know who he was. But he beat out Connor Cook for the starting job with the Houston Roughnecks. And they went out there and hung up 37 points. So I think the XFL is fun. It'll take a while to get used to and figure out, okay, who are the best players? Who are the guys he can't? Because that's part of the NFL. 
Like, why am I watching a Chiefs game? Pat Mahomes, Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey. Holy cow, this is fun. Chris Jones. And with the XFL teams, it'll probably take a few weeks to get a handle on who am I tuning in for. But I think their ratings were pretty good. And if Dallas has a quarterback, maybe they'll be fun to watch. On to draft stuff from Amir. Who do you guys have ranked higher? Jordan Elliott, defensive tackle at Missouri, or Justin Matabike, uh, defensive tackle, Texas A&M. I got them both in the second round, and this is where I cheat. This is how you cheat. My board has defensive tackle three, which is your three techniques, your under tackle, your guy who lines up over the guard and gets one-on-one a lot, and then I have defensive tackle one, your one technique, your nose tackle, who lines up between center and guard, and um, in a 4-3 anyway. And has to deal with double teams a lot. I put Elliott as a one technique, and I put Matabike as a three technique, and they're both right there in the second round. So I cheated, and I could tell you it's a tie. Matabike is the better player today. Elliott, I think, has tools to be a star. Oh, you're on the clock. Who would you take? I think I would take Jordan Elliott over Matabike, but I think at 51 for the Cowboys, I'll take either one, and I'll like the pick. Cody would like a slow strip tease today. We're not going to do that. Perhaps in a later video. Maybe on my next video, I'll do like a mock draft, a fan speak mock, where I'll embed it here in the video and we can watch who everybody else has picked and we can kick around the ideas that the Cowboy picks and maybe do that for two or three rounds. Alexander, talk renegades and what went wrong. They didn't have a quarterback. Uh, Jonathan, XFL, he wants to know if NFL teams are going to fill their rosters with XFL guys versus undrafted guys. And sure, XFL, I believe, ends right before the draft. So some of those guys are going to end up on NFL rosters. That's the good thing is let this thing be a minor league team. Partner up. Let it, let you know, be affiliated. And let's have fun. Uh, there's the Dak stuff. Dak, 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 Dak. Jeff, I'd love for you to talk about mid-round corners or tight ends the Cowboys could target in, say, the third or fourth round. Great work, as always, my guy. Uh, Corner, how many corners have I watched? I think I've watched, like, the top eight or nine guys. In some of my past videos, I've talked about some of those guys. Like, the third round for me uh, is where I've got, like, Bryce Hall. If the Auburn guy, Noah, got down to the third round, I'd jump all over that. If Cameron Dantzler got to the third round from Mississippi State, I'd jump all over that. But all those guys could be gone before that. So I probably need to get more names together before I can do that. Tight end I've been doing over the last 24 hours. And it's a better group than I was led to believe by early draft talk. Where it was like, oh, yeah, you can't really find a tight end in this draft class. Let me get to my notes let me get to my google docs so i can get to my notes and my board and i'll tell you about these tight ends for me right now i know i'm crazy because this is no one else's number one tight end that i've seen but i actually think my favorite guy is harrison bryant not hunter bryant hunter bryant is at washington harrison bryant is at florida atlantic He was a 1,000-yard receiver last year as a tight end, and he plays some tight end. He plays big slot mostly. He wears number 40, 1,000 yards, and he's just a big old monster of a man that runs a variety of routes, saw a couple of drops against UAB and a fumble against UTSA, but everybody's talking about the Dayton kid, Adam Troutman, who I love the tools that Troutman has, but to me, he's more raw player than Harrison Bryant. So if I want the big athletic guy, uh, I'll take the proven production that Harrison Bryant gives you from Florida Atlantic. Runs a variety of routes, trucks some tacklers, tosses guys off with one hand. Uh, He's probably going to be more of a big slot than a real tight end, but I'm a fan of him. Uh, Third round, Adam Troutman, the Dayton guy, 916 yards last year. He's listed at 6'6", 253. Uh... He's raw. He's, he's, he's raw. But both of those guys had a nice senior bowl. Cole Komet, Notre Dame, to me, is about a third-round player. He's just one of those guys that he's in line. He plays attached. He plays actual tight end, 6'5", 250, decent production at Notre Dame. Doesn't drop the ball. To me, he's just a standard, dependable tight end. That third-round-ish, I think that's about the right place for him. Bryson Hopkins at Purdue, 
He does have drops, but makes a lot of plays down the field, 6'5", 245. I think he's got a little herky-jerky ability to find some routes in space. Pretty good athlete. Works for you after the play breaks down. You don't need all these notes that I'm reading you. But, um, yeah, so, oh, and Hunter Bryant at Washington, smaller than some of these bigger guys. He's listed at 6'2", 239. But he's another guy, big time down the field production, plays kind of a slot where – Corners are too small, and safeties may not be athletic enough to cover him, gets down the field. So for me right now, I've got the firm of Bryant and Bryant as second rounders, Harrison Bryant and then Hunter Bryant. And then in the third round, guys like Bryson Hopkins, Cole Komet, and Adam Troutman. And some of these guys will probably go earlier than that, but that's where I've got them. And let me see. I think I got everything I wanted to get today. So in the comments, leave what you'd like to talk about tomorrow, of course. Get on over and join my team for the NAMI walk. I would really appreciate that. Donations are, of course, great. I donated. Mental Health Matters is the lesson for today. I love you guys, and I'll see you on the radio, all right?